Welcome back to the Second Time Lucky Money channel. In today's quick video, we are going to talk about everything that I've learned of being a host on Vast AI. Now, before we jump straight in and answer the typical questions that you might have, just a little bit of background. I bought a secondhand computer on Facebook Marketplace for about $500 a couple of months ago, actually, but I got around getting it ready and putting it on the Vast network about a month ago. What did I actually do? Well, I just stripped out the GPU that came with the computer. I put my own GPU in, which was a A4000 that I had laying around that wasn't mining at the time. And then I put it on the vast network and I've been monitoring it and having a look at the experience, looking at the discords, asking the new questions. And that's what I want to share with you guys. My experience, what have I learned? over the last month being a host on the Vast Network. Now, the first question and probably why you clicked on this video is, is it profitable being a host on the Vast Network? And the short answer for that is absolutely yes. I've definitely made more than what it cost me in power to run my rig and I'm well away of at least returning back the money that I spent on the secondhand computer. Now, the follow-up question to profitability is, is the profitability sustainable? What that means is, is it basically going to continue over the next couple of months? And the short answer is, I really don't know. But what I've seen between when I've started and where I am now, which again is just a month, is there's been a lot and a lot of GPUs that's come onto the market. And it's really a supply and demand thing. Uh, in the end of the day, there is X amount of customers that want to rent the compute power for their various different AI workloads. And again, we'll talk about the AI workloads shortly. And there is X amount of hosts that's coming on the network and putting their machines like mine on the network to supply compute power. So obviously, the less customers there are and the more machines there are, the price would definitely go down. And that's what I've seen in the last month. There's been a lot of GPUs that has been added and subsequently the price that you are getting rented goes down. So again, how long is this going to continue? Absolutely don't know, but at least I'm going to test it out with one GPU or maybe a couple of extra ones that I add in for the next couple of months. Now, the next follow-up question to that is, what is the best GPU to have on the vast network or in your uh, AI or proof of useful work rig? And the short answer of that is, whichever NVIDIA GPU you have that's got the most VRAM. VRAM seems to be the most important thing for most of these AI workloads. So if you've got a 3060 compared to a 3070, it's weird to say this, but um, you know, I would imagine the 3060 has been more profitable on the vast network compared to a 3070. And the reason for that is the amount of VRAM. So 12 gigs on the 3060 versus 8 gigs on a 3070. So um, the short answer around which GPUs are the best, well, the NVIDIA GPUs that's just got the most VRAM. And looking at that and looking at the numbers, and you can actually look at the numbers on the Vast AI site, and there's some tools that are available to look at profitability and what's getting rented and what's not. But in the majority or at least the most GPUs, on the vast network is typically 3090s and 4090s. Um, there's a lot of demand for those GPUs because they've got a ton of VRAM and they have a lot of compute and comparatively against the, um, how can I say, professional GPUs like the A5000, A4000, those type of things, they are relatively more inexpensive so they're not super expensive well those are expensive gpus but compared to the professional gpus they are a little bit cheaper now the follow-on question of that is can i switch my mining rig over on the vast network and point all of my gpus the short answer is yes you can do that but i definitely do not recommend it i've actually seen it and i haven't been seeing it getting rented now what do i mean by that well the platform that you put your GPUs on that is on the vast network is as important as what GPU do you put on the network. So the customers ultimately look for the overall pack package that will number one, get you rented and number two, get you verified. So that's more important. Well, I wouldn't say necessarily more important, but as important to the GPU that you put on. So what does that actually mean? Well, that means that you need to have a decent CPU, enough system memory, the right generation of PCIe bandwidth, the right amount of lanes, and 
enough storage and fast enough storage with a good internet connection for the customer at the end of the day. So if you tick all those boxes, and again, those boxes, uh, what, the, what you need in order to be ticked, again, what is the minimum requirements, are available on the VAST platform. So again, I'll flash it up on the screen, but uh, these are the minimum specifications. That doesn't necessarily mean that will get you rented. Uh, the better specs that you have, the more enticing you are to a customer to get rented at the end of the day. Now, the next question that I see quite a lot on the VAST Discord is around verification. How long does it take to get verified? And for those of you that don't know, the verified systems appear by default on the search page for customers. So what that means is you really want to be verified as your rig will have a better chance of being spotted by potential customers. So that's why, um, at least from a host perspective like myself, you really want to be verified. Now, how long does it take to be verified? Well, I actually don't know. It's been a month and I haven't been verified at all. Um, I see the question a lot in the Discord around how long does it take, when is it going to happen, there's no clear necessarily rule around when this happens and what exactly needs to happen. The typical answer that goes around all the time is the one that I'm going to repeat here. The verification process happens when it happens, either weekly, monthly, it doesn't really matter. The chances of your system being verified depends on your system and is there a demand for your system. So what that means is if your system is being rented 24-7 and there's a big demand for the system, the team will be verifying the systems that is really in demand. So the more in demand system that you have, the better your chances are of getting verified. And again, the other side of that is the higher the specifications, so the amount of lanes, bandwidth, SSD, those are the systems that the VAS team are more likely to go ahead and verify. So again, I haven't been verified, but I do know some community members that are miners that has been verified and they've been verified on 3060s. So again, it depends on the demand of the GPU and what your system specifications are for being verified. Now, the next question is, is it difficult to get your rig on the VAST network? And the short answer is no, it's not difficult. Yes, there is a step-by-step -step guide on the VAST AI website. And if you follow the guide, you'll be able to get your rig on the VAST network. Yes, this is not as easy as getting HiOS on, but it's a couple of Linux commands and you'll be A for a way and get on the VAST network. I've helped a couple of people over the last month and it's really not super difficult. I've done it also a couple of times where I've broke my rig and I had to redo it and I've got a second rig on there now. So I've done it a couple of times. It's really not that difficult once you get the hang of it. Now, the next thing that I see quite often is around the bandwidth or internet requirements, specifically on the VAST network. I have 100 megabytes down and 40 megabytes up. And at least in my case, that hasn't stopped me from getting rented. Yes, there's a ton of guys that have better internet and a lot of countries out there in the world that's got better internet. And the better your internet, the better your chances are for getting rented. But at least with what I have, I've managed to get hosted. Now, the other thing in relation to is it download or upload heavy, at least in my situation, the monitoring that I've done over the last month, it's more download than it is upload. At least that's my scenario. I've seen at least one community member where it was flipped the other way around, but everybody else that I speak to, it's more download than it is upload. In terms of ratio of, you know, what is the ratio between download and upload, at least in my case, what I've seen is 90% of the bandwidth that you use is actually download and only 10% is specifically for upload. Again, that has been my experience and the workloads that has been on my system. Following on to the workloads discussion, the typical question that I see is what the hell are these customers doing on the VAST network on my machine? And rightfully so, I've seen a lot of people concerned on the internet that there might be nefarious things happening or bad things, people cracking passwords, spreading viruses, all type of things like that. At least in my experience, and I've been looking at it with a hawk every single day, what the hell is going on on my computer and specifically on my network as well. I have seen three things done on my machine for the last three months. There might have been one or two extra things 
on a specific point in time that I didn't check, but every time that I go and have a look, which is at least a couple of times a day, I have seen stable diffusion, Jupiter, and CPU mining on my rig. Um, what have I seen the most? <laughs> it's probably the CPU mining. Um, the guys have been CPU mining the crap out of my um, thread ripper machine for probably the last three weeks. The first week I saw a lot of AI workloads, um, a lot of stable diffusion with one day of Jupiter. Now the workload or the intensity of that workload um, it differs and it's quite interesting, at least for me, um, I'm a bit of a nerd to see sort of how these different applications impacts my machine and what is used specifically in my machine. Again, that's information that I want for building more rigs in the future and potentially, you know, all of the different other players out there like Flux or RunPod um, to make sure that I have a well-rounded system that makes sure that I get rented at the end of the day. Um, again, my observation so far, CPU mining doesn't use the GPU at all. They just have <laughs> your CPU at 100% load. So just watch out for that, that people might be doing that. Um, stable diffusion is GPU intensive, so they will hit your GPU very, very hard. It will be at max TDP um, with stable diffusion, basically as, as long as the person is using it, I've seen. Um, and what we have with Jupiter, that is a combination, so that's actually quite interesting. It uses your um, CPU a little bit, and your GPU. So it sort of hits you the hardest in terms of the wattage that you will use um, because it does use more than one thread um, on the CPU. And again, you know, if I come back to stable diffusion, stable diffusion really only ever used one thread, maybe two, uh, but it's predominantly the GPU that gets hit with stable diffusion. Again, that's just my experience. I might be completely wrong here, but those are the three things that I've seen specifically done on my machine and the impact that it has on my machine. Now, those are the typical questions that I see thrown around quite often. And again, if I didn't answer a question that you have, please specify the question in the comments. I'd love to respond to you on at least my experience. And again, if you're a host or a customer on the Vast Network, please specify your comments. What are you hosting or what are you running on the Vast Network? I'd love to know what other people are doing on the VAST network. Now, again, this is my first video on VAST. This is definitely not going to be the last one. I've got a second rig that I managed to set up basically a week ago, and I need to do a ton of work specifically on that rig. Now, I haven't given up on GPU mining at all. <laughs> this is just one GPU out of the 40 odd that I have. Depending on my power, which is variable power, I switch on my mining rigs on top of the one rig that I have specifically for IO. So this is definitely not the end uh, for GPU mining for me at all. I'm definitely still GPU mining. It's just I'm trying to get ready and looking into all these different AI workloads. Now, again, if you've liked this video, guys, please like it and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. If you didn't, please specify in the comments what you would like me to change. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.